Good afternoon, Skyward Latif 3 Live. Welcome to today's recap. It is Thursday and what I thought would be a somewhat quiet day, thinking we'd get a little quiet day and then tomorrow the fireworks, they uh, shook it up. And that's, I guess, what goes on in this market these days. They shake it up when you kind of not expect it. But at least, you know, we had some type of plan. We came in today talking about the potential apex within the S&P, okay, or the, the, the 15 month, or not even 56 month channel and which way would we cheat towards. And then within the first 30 minutes, you had some pivots taken out and all of a sudden weakness set in and weaker stocks got weaker and stocks that were under pressure got pretty much, you know, violent moves to the downside and then stocks that were trying to be strong, you know, kind of caved in. And then, um, you know, in the afternoon we made a low and then some things paired off into the close because, you know, we have a big jobs number tomorrow. Uh, at this point, I'll tell you, I, I don't know exactly how the market could react. If someone told me the jobs number now, you know, or the jobs report, <laughs> I, I would have a hard time figuring out where we would be at the end of the day tomorrow. You know, I know that I think the estimate's 220. If we're at like 210, 220, above 200, I think people are going to think that, you know, we, we probably will do a September liftoff, which institutional um, reports that I read want. They want a September liftoff. They want the economy to show some strength. They want some normalization. Okay, so I do think that could help. Okay, if we get a number south of new, you know, 200 and 180 ish or something, and then all of a sudden we gap up because people think now the liftoff is in December or whatever the, it is, chances are that might be faded because then all of a sudden. You know, is it really working? You know, is the economy getting better with all the trillions of dollars that were thrown? So anyway, at this point, if you look at the charts, you know, I still see, you know, I see more broken sectors, more broken names versus leaders in constructive activity. But the S&P still is a stone throw away from the highs. But underneath the surface, there's lots of stocks getting beat up. So it's a very specific tape. And you have to be very specific with your entries, your exits, your stops. And your plan because you got to be there when it happens otherwise you miss out you look here at the chart of the s p you'll see um you know it, it's been a very monotonous range for a lot of 2017 i mean 2017 uh, 2015. here is the low end of the range we've been in this since february february march april may june july august how many months is that one two three four five six seven months we've been in this range where you have the low side and you have the high side and every time it seems like we're going to break below the low side, you rally up. Every time it feels like we might hold in there, to the downside. So what does that mean? It means you have a lot of frustrated momentum traders that are definitely looking for momentum, you know, for something to break out or break down, especially within, you know, the, the overall indices. So what happened today? This is what we were focusing on today. Yesterday, it pushed up to the high end of the range and failed. I thought they would take out, you know, yesterday's low. Uh, of two, you know, 209.95, but I, I didn't think that all of a sudden we'd be taking out this area. And, um, you know, obviously that happened and we came off the lows. So our new point of reference now is um, uh, 2079. And if you just look at this, just the S&P, I guess, you know, the bears will say, you know, you have a high and a lower high and we're below the 8 and 21 day. The bulls will say you have a low, a higher low, and another one, and still the jury's out. So that's where the S&P stands in this whole scheme of things. But if you look at this range, this range, you know, um, has been either a very big distribution pattern or, or time consolidation. And again, it, you don't know which way it, it is. You look at the diamonds, and the diamonds are now below the 200-day for quite some time now. The diamonds broke below the 200-day. We've been below this for one, two, three, four, almost four or five sessions. And um, chances are when you're in a stock that's below the 200 day for that many sessions, all of a sudden, you know, people get a little scared and you get some kind of, you know, possible cascading pattern. And, and at this point, you know, this has been pretty weak. It's below this resistance or support. The longer it stays below this, it's right, right now below every moving average. If this was a stock, I would say run for the damn hills. Okay, because, you know, this could happen very fast. And then who knows if even lower than that, you know, basically, this is it's very, very weak. And you want to talk about growth. IWM has been acting pretty horrendously ever since the false breakout right here. You had a false breakout when it showed alpha, came into the 200 day, held above it, made a, a lower high. And, you know, it, we were talking about this trend here. This trend pretty much got broken and it broke the 8 and 21 day there. Now it's struggling to hold, 
you know, some bigger support. So this to me is looking weak with the Dow, you know, the Dow looking weak. And then today you finally had the bios break, okay, or, or bend, you know, with some uh, pressure. Uh, here was uh, this little uh, ascending channel that resolved to the downside and closed below the 50-day for the first time in quite some time. So I maybe maybe give it a day, but if it stays below the 50-day, you know, for a little bit, you're gonna see, you could see some 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 lower prices, and and then that's another group that that's potentially lost from this spot. Um, is this trend broken? Not really. It's kind of right there. Um, do you have a somewhat of a false breakout from from this spot? Yeah. So you're getting into that one the spot where okay, can the strong sector stay strong, or is it going to play catch up to the downside? So that's that. XLF, what are you guys doing? Not a heck of a lot. You know, inside range, um, nothing really doing here except for it's not doing much special, but it's still hanging around. You know, then today, today there was some strength in the really, really being down oil names. You know, the XLE, the XOP, some of those stocks. So I did towards the end of the day get along them and, you know, just have something going on. You, you know, we've tried this many times and, you know, we've made some money with bounces, okay? And, you know, just to show you what happens when you're below the 200-day, okay? Here is the 200-day. This is when the XLE is above the 200-day. Here is when it broke the 8 and the 21-day. And then this is when it broke below the 200-day and couldn't reclaim it. So think about then how strong, you know, ExxonMobil and Chevron and the oil names were. They could do no wrong. How could you believe they're going to be below the 200-day and stay below it? Well, they did. And you could have sold above 90 or here even above 95 and not taking the pain all the way down to, you know, sub, sub 60 something or 70 something. So, you know, the, it, does the diamonds who are now just below the 200 day, just below there for a little while, can they pop up, pack, you know, pop back above it? Yes, maybe, but now that we're below it versus above it, like it does when it's trending, you know, it's vulnerable. And you look what happened here when it went below, you had a little V bottom but at least you could have been out of it and then when it went back above it, got back involved. So at this point, very, very risk averse until maybe it gets back involved. And this could be a rounding top also. So this you know, a little scary looking, to be honest. You know, and then you have the IWM now that also is toying with the, the 200 day and toying with prior uh, resistance that is now its support. And if it were to break below this, there's a pretty much as an air pocket to 115. You know, that's really what, what, what's going on. There's an air pocket to 115. Can we hold this or not? So when you're in a question mark type environment, just, you know, be a little bit more low growth, low net, and, and sometimes just get out of the way because at some point something might not get saved. You know, you look at, the, the, you know, some of the moves that you saw in like something like Disney where trending, 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 and, um, you know, obviously you had a, a V bottom move here, but, you know, look at the, look, look, in, in, in these two days, it held the 200 days, so a nice little trade if you, if you did it today, like a lot of people in the VTF. But this engulfed almost months and months. And now it held the 200 day, but with something different, look at Viacom. You know, or <laughs> look, look where this is, okay? By the way, look when it broke the 200 day. So if, if when it was looking strong and had a nice channel and everyone's like thinking there's a time consolidation, if you would have got out of it when it broke the 200 day, never reclaimed it right around 80, you didn't have to sit through this friggin mess of the move all the way down into the 40s. So write that down in a piece of paper. When things break the 8 and 21 day, if you're an active trader, you get out of the way. If you're playing things tight as momentum traders usually do for alpha and cash flow, you get out of the way. But if something breaks below the 200 day, stays below the 200 day for two to four sessions or a week or two, you get out of your investment, okay? And, and <laughs> look what happened there. So at this point, you know, it did bounce off the lows and it had huge volume. You go to basic studies, you go to volume and see what's in there. Huge volume, so maybe that was it for a while. But again, very, very broken as a trade, perhaps there's something there, but that's it's pretty friggin' um, harsh, <laughs> really, really harsh. And then look what happened when it broke this level here, you know, just levels do work and levels do count. And being below the 200 day does matter. Besides when people make fun of me about the 8 and 21 day, because if you get out when they break the 8 and 21 day, at least you have the luxury of being flexible to test the 200 day, you know, and then if that happens, boom, you get out of the way. So that, that good, you know, that leads me to Apple, you know, Apple, you know, do I love the product? Do I have the phone? Do I have a lot of things there? Yes. Um, 
Did it break below the 200 day now for the first time in a long time? This is the last time it was below the 200 day, or actually, no, it wasn't. I'm sorry. This is when it's been above the 200 day. Broke below it. Huge channel. Okay. See, see if it stays below. Because if it stays below it for quite some time, you don't know what's going to happen here. You don't know if it's going to hit 105, which it can. You don't know if it's going to go back to here because, again, it's acting poorly below all the moving averages. During this trend, it was above the 8 and 21 day and the 50 day for the majority of the time. Now it's below it. Did we catch a nice little red dog reversal yesterday? We did. Okay, did it hold above that today? It did. But is the jury out whether or not, you know, this is going to be a seller's trap and just get back above the 200 day and get back into the channel and pop back in? The, you know, I don't know. Um, I, I went home long it and I, I got out of it while I was up like 50 cents. And now you have an inside pattern here. Does a bear flag develop? And it does it not reclaim the 200 day and then continue lower? It can. So we'll watch that and we'll trade it and we'll figure out what's next. As far as something like Google, um, you know, it really still, it's still one of the best names out there, but you just have to be a little careful. This is when it broke this, you know, the upper side of it and now it's been holding here. It gave you a trade above this yesterday and then today shook the tree like it normally does, got me out of it, and it's still just a choppy mess. Just remember, when we played it in here, it was a choppy mess for a long time and then it finally went and then had earnings. Who knows how long this choppy mess is going to be, so just take a little care. You know, Amazon was my focus this morning. I actually made money on Amazon, even though it looks like crap now. It doesn't look like crap, but it, yeah, it looks like, yeah, it was, <laughs> uh, we'll see. You know, it broke above the prior high. Here's your prior high. This is a 539.14 and made a high of a 542.74. So it did try, but as this was happening, you had a lot of things breaking down. So you had to be a bit careful. So I know for me, I came in long Amazon. I did add through 540. I sold some 541, some 541 halves, held some, and then I got stopped out when it broke back below 530, 814-ish or somewhere around there because that's a red dog reversal the other way. If it breaks above a momentum level and doesn't hold, you get out. If it breaks above it and holds, you stay in. That's some of my momentum rules. So with that being said, it closed near the lows, and now it doesn't look so good. It looks almost vulnerable that it could break into the gap. You go to the five-minute chart, how could you have handled it? You know, you have to have five-minute charts on, okay? Here was your first move. Um, this is when it broke above your, you know, the prior day's high. Gave you a quick move, but then this really shouldn't have happened. <laughs> it shouldn't have came right back below it. And then once it came below it and couldn't get back above it, you could have easily put your stop in the same place around that I did at 538 because here is a breakout failure. So it was a trade there if you were really quick. So many times I've done this trade, sold it, made some money, and then it goes to friggin' 550. And I'm like, oh, I wish I didn't take the money. This time I took some money, stayed in it, and then right around here, I'm like, you know what? I'll figure it out later and didn't get trapped in that mess, especially considering that we were losing momentum in a lot of key things. So, you know, the last few leaders are going to have a hard time being leaders <laughs> by themselves. Facebook also, I came in long Facebook. Facebook. Um, you know, I sold a little bit pre-market, then I waited. It took out the prior high here, which was uh, 9709. You know, sold some strength, which I talked about, and then once it went back below this, I sold it. Right? I was long it, bought more here into that. Went home, you know, went home long it last night. Sold some strength, and then once it went back below here, I get out of the way. And now this is a pretty nasty candle. So we'll see what happens. Maybe if it holds this for a little while and tries to, I guess, um, what, what would be the, even the word, word you know, work this off, uh, okay, but, but this is going to be blaring for a little while. You go to your five-minute chart, what could you have seen? Okay, first of all, right here, just like almost like in Amazon, you had your gap up, it wedged, gave you a nice push when the market looked like it was going to be okay, came back quick. This probably shouldn't have happened, okay, so that was your first little red flag that you might need to get rid of some, and then Right here, okay, is when we said, you know, me and Mike Lee were talking about on the virtual trading floor, we're like, you have a five-minute head and shoulders pattern, left shoulder, head, right shoulder, lots of things are selling off. Get out of the way. We get out of the way, you could have actually been short. You know, I wish I would have just flipped and went short because look at the next move, boom, to fill the gap. So, you know, right there also, you know, I could probably show you the spiders 
when you know when it was down here had a bit of a bounce and this was the first time Netflix I mean sorry Facebook didn't lead the bounce it actually lagged the bounce giving you some clues to be friggin careful and then that happened and then it continued lower and bounced a little bit and and now you know in that in that part of the, the end of the day it didn't really do much maybe it needs to have a 95 strike but this was a, a, a nice five minute head and shoulders pattern where at least you could have got out of here long let alone made some quick active money as the market weakened for cash flow. And those of you listening to this from the VTF, you know we were on top of this, and I think a lot of you guys did well. Congratulations if you did. And now, you know, very tricky. Um, nothing else really looks good in social media. LinkedIn uh, broke uh, key support. So now, you know, this thing could bleed lower. You know, broke this 191 that we were talking, sorry, 291 that we were talking about. Or no, sorry, yeah, no, 191-ish. Um, Twitter. You know, uh, has been making new lows, okay? And we talked about the only thing that could potentially be a catalyst now is the lower it goes. So, you know, I actually started buying some $30 calls for September 18th, you know, here. And I'll add a little bit, little bit as we go down. I'm not going to buy this stock because I, I don't want the risk. I, who knows where it can go? It can go to friggin' 20. So if I accumulate small calls the whole way down, maybe at some point we get some kind of, you know, I guess catalyst, whether it's uh, potential acquisition or whatnot, um, and then trade out of it. I'm not going to buy the stock the whole way down and be, you know, at, at limited liability, but if I buy some, some calls, which is why I have it on the VTF, you'll see that I do it small, go out, you know, over five, six weeks, chances are at some point, you know, some article is going to talk about a takeover or one might really happen. It's less than a, you know, the, the market cap, I think, is less than 20 billion. Facebook, Facebook is like 300 billion. But anyway, um, and then um, they talk about the strength in the XLE. So XLE, here was your, you know, your first green day um, diverging from the overall market. Does it mean that it's, you know, the bottom is in? We've seen this a few times. You get two days and then down. Hopefully, maybe we get a, another day. That would be nice. Um, you know, let's see if there's any volume attached to it. Basic studies, you go to volume. Okay. Some volume attached to it. So maybe this is a day one XOP. You know, even more volume. Maybe this is a day one, but you know, you only have the luxury of buying that and doing that if you sell things correctly. And look how long ago this thing broke to 200 days, 75, cut in half. You know what? If you bought it here at 80, it would have hurt to sell around 75, but you would have lost five or seven dollars versus blowing up. And now the question is, is there a small pivot to trade against? And it seems like maybe there is, and we shall see. So. Overall, it's August. I think it's August 6th, and then we have the big jobs number tomorrow. I do think the market wants a stronger one. They want lift off in September. We'll see what we get tomorrow. You know, the inside pivot is kind of bending to the downside in the S&P. You have the Dow below the 200-day. You have the Russell flirting with the 200-day. You have a big potent down day in the bios. You know, lots of tech is, you know, basically broken or not ready to break out. So does it feel like things are more negative than not? Yes. but. <laughs> Would it surprise me if we gapped up 10, 15 handles and then all of a sudden everyone's like, oh, we're going to make new highs next week. It could happen too. So either way, there's risk and you have to have conviction. At this point, I really don't have much conviction. I'm going to use my rules. Potential day one in the oil, so I'm long that. You know, pwned down day in the bios. I'm short a little bit of that. And as far as stocks, I'm going to wait and see. I got, you know, I sold some strength. I got stopped out of some things and I was actually green on a day that, you know, I came in pretty heavy long with. So I'm happy the way it was navigated. And then tomorrow we'll see what kind of action we get. At least the ranges are getting bigger. The moves are getting more violent. So then as a trader, you could take advantage of the over emotion as long as you could handle it. If you bought Disney too early today, you probably couldn't handle it. If you waited till it got a dollar within the 200 day, you know what? Something like Disney had a, a, a $4 move off the lows. If you wanted to short it too, it was up a little bit. You could have shorted it when it broke below yesterday's low for a follow through downside. Big gap down, close near the lows. It broke what was considered pretty support. I talked about the support yesterday. Broke below it. So, you know, some guys probably made some decent money short this thing when it broke below that low. And then if you, if you didn't start at 107 and started at 106 or 104, maybe you caught that bounce, made some money. So you got to know your levels. You need to have the right preparation in order to be able to stay with some kind of high probability trade at extremes. So if you're going to play both sides of the envelope, Either do it level versus level, or at least do it near things that are really, really compelling. So, 
you know, you have a little bit of space and a little bit of risk to let your ideas come to fruition. Uh, I'll be in Short Hills tomorrow. I'll be on the radio. No morning call video by me. You know, I don't do Fridays, especially over the summer, Monday through Thursday, and I'm so happy to have Amelia. She's been filling in great. Love the British accent. She's very, you know, nice to deal with, and uh, she'll be back next week. And I will be on Twitter, and we'll try and navigate tomorrow and figure out what to do. And that's all we can look for in this market are things to do. And if you are an investor, you know, stay the course. You've survived. 2001 bubble burst, you survived the financial crisis, you survived the potential breakup of the European Union, the Greece saga, the Mayans saying the world would end. And, you know, keep putting your monthly flows in, especially if you're sub 50 years old and you'll probably have a nice average cost at some time down the road because over time, it's good when volatility happens because you get a better average cost, but you need to do that with the indices, not trade stocks. If you're looking for cash flow and alpha, you got to know a, a system and a process and by reading my note every day that comes through a Red Royal Access and by watching the videos, you know, you're well on your way. Have a good night. It's Thursday night. Have some beverages.